on the list of things to talk about then, we've got prison officer culture, what happens in prison stays in prison, and we've got K-Wing and the healthcare K-Wing and healthcare, okay. Here we go, K-Wing. Have you ever been on K-Wing? Have you ever been at Strange Ways? I've never been Strange Ways, mate, no. Oh, you missed, missed out then on your CV with K-Wing, didn't you? <laughs> Prisoners and officers talk about um, K-Wing lovingly. Uh, it's the biggest wing in um, Strange Ways. Three landings, uh, approximately 70. Wait, well, holds about 200, 210 over three landings. Uh, like I said, Beirut, whatever you want, you know, all singing, dancing. It's a big place. So when I was on <laughs> K-Wing, um, and also everyone likes to think when they talk about K-Wing, you know, all glossy-eyed and that, that when they were on there, it was the worst. You know, the roughest, the most violent or whatever. Which is bollocks, unless you're on when I was on. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why, Sean. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Let me tell you why. So I landed on K-Wing uh, about May 2005. We had a PO, um, PO Pennington. Uh, funny guy. I liked him a lot. He was a old type screw, really nice man. Look like your Sergeant Major, nice tash. As a PO, he was everything you wanted. Just to, just to recap, so people in America that know where we are, we've got prison officer, we've got senior officer, who's wing base manager, and then your PO um, is a manager. They might have a wing like K-Wing and do the Oscars job, which is a shift manager's job as well. So PO Pennington is on K-Wing. He's re retired now, bless him. Lovely man. He was there on K-Wing when you needed him. He didn't stick his oar in. He let his SOs run the wing. And when you needed him, he was there. So we go to our SOs. So we have Bertie Bassett in the book. Um, he did contact me, actually, after... Well, he didn't. After reading the book, Bertie Bassett got in touch. Bertie with... Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nice fella. Um, <laughs> bit like a bulldog, you know, big in stature and all that. Um, but he actually got in touch with his missus, said he read the book. Um, he, he thanked me for mentioning him in a good light, even though my description of him was less than, you know, a bit colourful. Anyway, so you got this guy. So he's a fantastic manager. Big in presence, big bellowing voice. The cons fucking loved him, right? Because he was straight as a die. Yeah. So if you had a problem with you, wild man, that problem would get dealt with. If five minutes later you wanted some off him, you know, come and talk to me. That's how we were. Didn't take things personal with staff or prisoners. And I love that. So you weren't too faced? No, absolutely not. He was fair. Then we had SpongeBob. Um, he was a smaller version. Um, shall we say... Well, he was about five foot five with a flat top, and people used to take piss out of his flat top, which he didn't like. However... Did he have little man disease in by any chance? A little bit. <laughs> However, I quite liked him, and he, he was a mini Bertie Bassett, right? So he did the job exactly the same. So you got big lad and mini me, and then we had Wainers. Now, Wainers uh, was the third SO, did work on shifts. He was a lover, not a fighter, but on a wing as big as K-Wing, logistically, paperwork... Things like that. There's a, it, the prison service produces far too much paperwork. He was amazing. So he dealt with the clerical shit. Kept ever, you know, yeah. dotting I's, crossing T's, all that bollocks. And the other two dealt with the discipline and it worked brilliant. P.O. Pennington in support when we needed him. So we had cracking managers. So on that wing at that time, um, we took anybody. What I mean by that is on the wing, we had a lot of basic prisoners. So they're prisoners who are on punishment. They've had things taken off on like TVs. We'd have them down one side the landing. We had some lads who had later meet on healthcare, you know, in years' time, who were mentally unwell. We'd manage them on the same landing as the basics. And we had most of the cleaners on that landing as well. So the cleaners made it a bit easier because you've got basics and mentally unwell people, so it was a difficult population. Well, you need the cleaners with the mentally health, aren't you, really? Of course you do. Of course you do. And And like I say... That left probably 40, 45 prisoners on that landing to manage, which was enough because they're quite difficult. Yeah. They weren't going to work then. Other prisoners weren't going to work anyway, were they? No, no. So um, you've got lifers on there. Uh, you've got people from dispersals. Uh, we used to get a lot of prisoners from the SEG. 
how it was supposed to work if a prisoner went from any wing in strange ways to the seg. Once they were fitted to come out of the seg, they should go back to their wing. So if D wing took one to the seg, it should go back there. What inevitably happened is D wing had refused to have them because uh, they threatened one of their staff, so they come to K wing from the seg. However, we got threatened every day. Um, when I was on there at that time, it was managed robustly. There was a lot of CNR incidents. I remember one day when we had four, which was a lot, but it was pretty much one a day, an alarm bell, and they go to the seg, and maybe two hours later, they'd be back on the wing. So it was a, a difficult population, really good staff, maybe 20, 25 good staff, five or six middle of the road, and then some crap staff. However, they were managed by the others. You know, I've talked about this before, chameleon officers. If they work with someone who's shite, they'll be shite. If they work with a good team, they'll be good. You know, that sort of thing. So um, it was fantastic for about 18 months. I loved it. Uh, the staff were all good. You had a laugh, really dark humour, taking piss out of each other every day. In fact, it, it, wasn't like it used to rip the shit out of each other. You know, it was <laughs> constant. If you fucked up or whatever, away you go. Um some some cracking people on there. My mate will work with Nobby Nobbler in the book. Um, incredibly private man. I would never mention his name, but I worked with him a lot, and he was one of the favourite people to work with. We got each other's back. Similar sense of humour. Um, it was great. 18 months' time, so things are changing. We, we're getting a new PO. I don't know whether PO Pennington retired then. So we get a new PO. This PO had been a reception senior officer. So reception, again, in prison, logistically, has got to be bob on. You've got people coming in, people going out, paperwork's got to be right. You know, your role starts from there. So you, you can understand that. You know, American prisons are the same, aren't they? You know, it all happens there and away you go. It's where you come in and where you go out, isn't it? Yeah. So he come onto the wing and with him, um, maybe not immediately, but... Quite a few new staff come. He actually alienated some staff, and I would say maybe half a dozen really good staff left because they didn't get on with him. And what he did, like every good manager do, he came onto the wing, you know, watched it for a month, see how it was running before he made any changes. Bollocks. He come on day one and changed it all. Completely changed it all. Didn't listen to staff, and it went to rat shit. Um, after eight months... And this, this, is, this was my downfall with him. After eight months, he said to me, what do you think then for the new regime how it's running? I say, it's shite. My days probably seems five hours longer, you know. I'm not enjoying it. Anyway, he brought with him a new SO and an officer, Bonnie and Clyde in the book. Um, that's when it started going tits up. These two, Bonnie and Clyde, were a couple. They denied that they were a couple. Everyone knew they were a couple. Not a good idea, as you can see, having a couple working together on a wing. Because especially if one's a manager, they might show favouritism or whatever. Quite often what happened at Strange Ways, if an officer, you know, hooked up with an SO the other way, they might. I saw people get split up because people knew they were an item. So, you know, you're going to work over there like and split them up. So these two were an item, they denied it vehemently. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a big word for me, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, th they denied it. Um, the, the first time, what the female half of the two was doing was one of these officers um, and wild men had come across who would, at that time we had wing files, so every prisoner had a wing file. So if you did something wrong, if you call me a soft-ass Yorkshire twat and threaten to bang me out, I might give you a warning, yeah? And, and I would say, right, Mr. Atwood, bam, bam, bam. I won't call you Mr. Atwood, sorry. Write something in your file. So she's putting things in people's files but not telling them. So when they're then taking in the office and giving a warning, they're like, I ain't had no warnings, that sort of thing. Stitching people up, really. So two of my mates... Um, are on the freeze landing that day. We've got a lad who is an enhanced prisoner. An enhanced prisoner, he's got his PlayStation, he's been a model prisoner, he's getting extra visits because he's enhanced and he can spend more money as a sentenced prisoner. So two of my mates go up to his cell. Um, 
you're going on basic. So this lad's like, what, what the fuck are you on about? So how it should work, the IEP system, from, from being an ensign's prisoner, if he misbehaved, he should get taken down a level to standard. Yeah. So he'd still have his TV, but he'd lose his PlayStation and visits. This guy, without any knowledge, is going straight to basic. So he said, fuck off, I'm not moving. Yep. I've had no warning. So they're looking at him thinking, well, he, you know, he's a model prisoner. So they go down to the SO. This is Bonnie and Clyde, the uh, Clyde author of it. The SO steams upstairs, straight in the cell, followed by my two mates. And we had this on the last podcast. How do you say it? Hoiked up. <laughs> Hawking phlegm. Hawking phlegm. This is the SO, the wing manager. Hawking phlegm spits in the prisoner's face. <gasps> fucking hell. Right? That is the fucking wing manager. Yeah? The prisoner then spits in his face. Yeah? He then drops the prisoner, both hands on the bunk bed, jumping up and down on his legs. So my two mates rag him off him, drag him out of the cell. They've dragged the wing manager out of the cell. Other staff have gone in. The prisoner's down now. He's obviously kicking off. He's got restrained and taken to the seg. I know afterwards they both had him in the office on, ever do that again in front of us. You know, it's disgusting. A lot of young staff about as well. Some who will have seen that incident. So that's not good. So I know about that. I'm not involved. That's not my story. But both guys recounted it separately. And that's what happened. Week later, two young staff. Now, one of them is not so young. I'm not giving him that credit. However, they approached me. They've been asked to take a prisoner in the office. Now, when we had Bertie Bassett, if Wildman got a warning, yeah, he won't let it stand Bertie, call him in every day. So wild man, there'd be a queue of lads, take him in, sit down, not having your fucking taking piss out of my staff. You've had one warning, one more, you're on basic. He'd let him know, give him Scarborough warning. You know, yeah. smarten your act up or you're on basic. So these two young lads, sorry, one of them's young, one's not so young, but they're new in service. They haven't been prison officers long. They take a guy in the office with an ex another experienced female officer the SO jumps up and twats him, right? Now, they didn't know what to do. This kid's on floor. They didn't know what to do. The other officer left. They're both like, fucking hell. Anyway, no alarm bell. This guy picks himself up. SO's getting that, you fucking prick. Get out of my fucking office. Now, one of them lads come to me upset. Didn't know what to do. Another few days. Me and my mate, we're working together on Two's Landing. Another lad who is a cracking officer, um, proper hard bastard. Not a lot of them about, but a real hard bastard, but a gent. So he's not a bully boy or anything like yeah. that. The SO asked us to take this lad in office. He was a French lad, very polite. He was on the twos. Um, I got him down, put him down for a cleaner's job when one come. So polite, it was unbelievable. We take him in office. Um, S.O. jumps up, grabs hold of him, tries to twat him. Me and my mate ends up pulling him off. This French lad's going bananas, yeah? The S.O.'s saying, uh, you've called this officer, his partner, a slag. I'm not having this anyway. My mate got him up against wall, fucking out of order, you know. Don't be doing this shit. We don't need it. He's trying to cause trouble, isn't he? He was off his head. In his past life, he'd been a football hooligan. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Um, which obviously do not bode well, does it? No. However, it was out of order. Me, I'm fucked off now because the wing's going to rat shit. There's 40 staff on that wing, and a couple of staff are basically fucking it up for everyone else. Plus, the prisoners get to know about this. You know, they're talking. They'll, they'll know what's going on, so it's not a good atmosphere. Um, the PO, incidentally, he definitely knew what was going on and he's not managing it. So my friend said, me, you're going to get yourself in bother. You're firing bullets now. You know, there's all of us on the wing. Why are you firing bullets? I says, because I'm not, I'm not prepared to run with this. So I goes to SpongeBob, who's still working on the wing, and I says to him, 
Have a word with the PO. He needs to sort this lad out and pack it in. Yeah. The PO didn't do that. He took it above to a wing governor. So now it's going to be an investigation. Because now he's told the governor he has to get investigated. Took a few months, this. His other half is now going round the jail telling everyone I'm a grass. Yeah? Cool. No, seriously, this is the culture I'm on about, right? What I've done, in effect, is not being prepared to put up with this idiot, twatting people for no good reason. Yeah? She's telling me I'm a grass. It became really apparent because I was going on, on units and people were turning their back on me. I had some friends, not everybody, but I remember one day I went on A-Wing, so two of my mates on there, had a bit chat, walked down. Cockney SO comes out, can I have a word yet? If there's any incidents on this wing, don't get involved. So I said, why is that? He says, because my staff won't back you up. You know, we don't work with grasses. Told him to go fuck himself. Went back to K-Wing. So let's go to the investigation now. At some point, Nobby Nobbler and another mate, yeah, pulled some members of staff who were calling, who's this Samworth de Grass? Cat A unit they were on. A manager on there said, who's this fucking grass Samworth? So my mate, Nobby Nobbler, what do you mean grass? Let me explain what's happening. So he explained, yeah? Over a period of a month or so, people start talking. Anyway, we have the investigation. So there's a governor, there's a union man who's going in with me, and there's a, a governor who was all right, and a PO who was a fucking sack of shit doing the investigation. So this governor says to me just before I went in, everyone else has been interviewed, prisoners have been interviewed, but that don't count for anything. Yeah? My mate, youngsters, lots of people being interviewed, so I'm pretty much the last person in. The union man and the governor, the governor first says to me, uh, we've never had this at Manchester. So I said, never had what? He went, you know, I says, I don't. Do you mean someone who's like, spoke out against someone who's throwing fists about and knocking shit out of people for no good reason? So the governor started walking off. He's on hiding to nil in him. So I said, governor, where are you going? Answer me question. He's having nothing to do with that. He's gone. The union man says, this guy's going to get sacked because of you. This is the guy who's going in representing me. So I says to him, if he gets fucking sack, it's his own fault and nothing due to me. So I told him I didn't want him in. So I goes in the investigation, he come in anyway. So he gets in there, Sean, sits down. Everyone else has been, sits there. What's your name, Samworth? Uh, what's your favourite chocolate bar, Mars bar? What's your favourite alcoholic drink, bitter? Okay, thank you. That's how it went. He never asked me a fucking question. Never asked me what he was doing, what he was going on about. Uh, what he'd done that day, nothing. That was the investigation over. I believe he got a slap on wrist and they moved him off K-Wing. By this time, I'd had enough, like, so I ended up on my way.